All right, we got the recording button going. All right, thank you, Hiram. Mm -hmm. Welcome everybody to Burke's Bard's first Thursday. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, welcome, Heather. Welcome, Sandra. Welcome, Jane. It feels like we're in the same room, right? <laughs> and welcome to all of you for um, for showing up. I appreciate it. Um, it's, uh, I don't know about you, but it's been a pretty uh, interesting couple of days. And I think that uh, I certainly needed this um, focus on poetry and, you know, back to some things that count, some things that really matter. So, uh, Burke's Bards meets every month. We are virtual since 2020, <laughs> according to Angie. Um, she puts the word out and we will have another reading on first Thursday in December. And you're welcome to join us. And um, Marilyn, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay. Do you want to take it from there? Uh, just a reminder that we're still collecting Redner's tapes. Uh, that helps to fund our um, um, budget. Uh, and it's looking like maybe this next year there won't be a grant from the state. So if you can, if you do shop, shop at Redner's. Uh, save your save tapes. The, there's a little card you have to uh, scan every time you go through the register, and it really does help us uh, support. I, I get $50 checks from them every, I don't know, couple of months just from the generous uh, support of uh, people who turn their tapes over to me. And Marilyn, do you want to just briefly say uh, you're starting to do a series in uh, senior centers? Tell a little bit about that. Yeah, I held my first one today uh, in Fleetwood. Uh, there's a uh, senior center. They've recently moved to, uh, looks like an old school, uh, elementary school building. And uh, we had two participants, which, you know, I told them about tonight. So I'm hoping maybe I'll see them again. Um, and I'm starting basically to, to meet at the different uh, Berks Encore centers. I think they have about six of them scattered around the county offering uh, poetry workshops, uh, highlighting the RAC uh, um, Poet Laureate contest in particular, but also the, uh, the poetry prompts coming out of Studio B in Boyertown. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Okay, Haram, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Um, unmute. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Great. I'll post Great. in the um, chat room a couple of other public relations announcements that Jennifer Hetrick shared, uh, both about the um, Poet Laureate competition or, or solicitation that is currently open, and also um, the notice about next month's featured reader, a good friend of mine and a wonderful poet, Sylvia Diane Lady Di Beverly. So, um, so there is that. Uh, I think what we'll do then is go ahead and get started. We are so honored and really proud tonight to have three recent poet laureates of Reading uh, featured in this reading series. Talk about a triple crown of, of poetry reading. We've got a, the best of the best here. And so it's a real joy to be able to uh, offer their work to all of us here. And I'm so appreciative of all three of them being willing and able uh, to join us tonight. We're gonna start with a colleague who I think all of you know, Heather Thomas. Um, Heather, let me, uh, and maybe uh, as we do this, Hiram, if, yeah. just a quick, just a quick note. I've tried to share from my location. Okay, it's giving me only a host can share. Okay, let me uh, give me just one second. I'm multitasking here. Let me see if I can give you permission to share. Um, hold on, just one second, Marilyn. Sure. Let's see here. I think I know how to do this. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Now, see if you can okay. share now. Okay. Thank you. Good. So what you're going to be seeing here is the cover of Heather's uh, most recent book. 
Here's her bio, and it's very impressive. Heather Thomas, Heather H. Thomas is the award-winning author of Vortex Street, which you're seeing there, which was published by Future Cycle Press in 2018. Also, Blue Ruby, Resurrection Papers, Practicing Amnesia, and a bilingual selected poems. I'm probably slaughtering this title, Heather, Reconocimento or Recognition. Um, by Berks, Berks, she was Berks County Poet Laureate, 2008 through 2010. Heather's honors include a Rita Dove Poetry Prize, whoa, a Gertrude Stein Award in Innovative American Poetry, yes, and a fellowship at VCCA, that's the Virginia Center for the Creative Arts, which is a wonderful facility down in Central Virginia. Her poems are translated and published in, now get this, Albanian, Arabic, Italian, Lithuanian, Spanish, and Swedish. She has published, or she has poems, excuse me, forthcoming in Planet in Crisis, the Wallace Stevens Journal, and the Shining Rock Poetry Anthology. With that, I will turn it over to Heather. Each poet's going to present and read for about, about 12 to 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hiram, and thank you, everyone. It's such an honor to be here with you and to see so many fellow sister, sister and fellow poets and friends. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I'm just starting my little timer here uh, to be mindful of the time. And Heather, do I understand correctly from the chat room that we should all be singing you happy birthday? Uh, it is my birthday. Maybe we'll do that towards the end of the oh, reading. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you. Um, so I, I'm, I'm so honored. Thank you, Burks Bards. Thank you, Hiram. And thank you so much to Reading Area Community College for making the Burks Poet Laureate uh, competition and the laureateships possible for so many years. Uh, it's an incredible commitment and uh, service that RAC is providing to our community to, to promote poetry. If you are here today thinking about applying for the laureateship, please do. And I was, you know, we poets, we, we think, we write, we, we operate so much solo, alone, in our solitary rooms. And the laureateship is an opportunity, was an opportunity for me to really connect with the community uh, connect with the community and to promote poetry. And uh, I was so thrilled to be able to do that. Uh, I was able to bring in some national poets at the time I was teaching at Kutztown University. I was able to really uh, uh, help to make happen some wonderful readings. And then the other thing that I did, and, and this really carried on into later years beyond my two years, as the Poet Laureate was to really advocate for the legacy of the poet Wallace Stevens, the great modern American poet who was born in Reading and doing that through uh, uh, reading his work and through giving some lectures and talks at libraries about his work and so forth. So uh, I am going to start with a new poem that uh, feels timely given where we are with the election. Uh, it's a poem that will be coming out in Barrow Street Journal, and it appears now on the Writers Against Trump website, which I encourage you to check out and maybe even sign up for uh, if you are interested. So this poem um, was prompted by the, really the culture of lies and gaslighting that we've been living for the past four years. And also alludes to some news events, including one you may not have heard about back in January in Pittsburgh, where police urged people hearing what sounded like the recordings of a baby crying not to open their front doors. Fake. If a baby is crying outside your door, don't open it, the police advise, because the baby's a fake. A fake baby must be another sign, truth is dead. 
Do you wait inside the door in your own shoes or to someone else's bought from goodwill? Empathy as economics. You're walking in someone else's shoes wherever they came from. The press of feet on the ground, the mark made on the soul. A voice inside is calling, come back before the faker outside comes for you with jackboots instead of a crying child. The ground falls away amid demands for geography. The faker screams your location on a gerrymandered map with no writing. He slams his finger on the map and he alone goes boom. Outside and inside, children are crying. No one can find any shoes. My next poem came uh, to me after an autumn walk near my home. And it was published in Wabi Sabi, Celebrating Simple Beauty uh, by Studio B uh, Art Gallery and Press in Boyertown, PA. Gratitude. I live for the last minute. The covers flip back. A glance already late is staggering. Now I stand before the ginkgo, my phone pointing at shook gold limbs, flashing a thousand tiny fans. Then my screen goes black. Why gratitude comes on time? Night takes the leaves, bare ruined by the cold. When I return the next day, the stripped limbs stand straight skied. My feet step gingerly on a galaxy of pale yellow stars. Have I been raised up to these stars or did they fall here overnight? I wrote the next poem after uh, an experience in the checkout line at Staples and also doing some research into the word murmuration, which is the swooping moves of starlings in flight. This poem is from my book, Vortex Street. Murmuration. Reverb wrecks my head when the old woman behind me drops her cane. We're standing in line at Staples. I pick up the cane and hand it back. Her gray glazed eyes meet mine. I hear her friend waiting to pay for a Pepsi. Angels among us in this world. I'm buying a spiral notebook neon pink and open the wire threaded pages into wings. She doesn't need her cane. She's flying high into the dome and I'm there by aerodynamics in V formation. Geese ride the wingtip upwash of the bird ahead. Starlings follow their seven nearest neighbors, shift course as the thousandfold flocks, inky dives drape the sky. We're treading air, her hand holding mine, the years all clear, starlings to each other's dance across the dome. I used to chase their noisy iridescence off the tree, oblivious to their lesson. Dirty birds, invaders, destroyers, shimmering purple, green, black in the sun. I began the next poem after looking out the, the window during a night flight from uh, Cairo to Tel Aviv where I was traveling for a poetry festival. And I saw in the night sky, a zip line of light through the dark that seemed to me the only border that existed between uh, the Arab and the Arabs and the Israelis and their long history of conflict. This is another poem from Vortex Street. Atonement. Which one travels toward the stranger 
who in night speed slits of borders, time zones, word maps crossing multilingual, what's on the tongue risking trust without translation? Atonement in a zip of light drawn across the skies at one mint. As the light shifts, but does not separate one with other one. I was also thrilled that that poem was in the anthology Undocumented Great Lakes Poets Laureate for Social Justice. Yeah, I share that honor with some of you here. All right, I'll close with a few new poems. This one is a meditation poem. It's called Held by the Wind. When mind tells the breath, come back. The body is a journal of travel, remembering exhales, interior miles to the fogged looking glass. The compressed lungs again breathtaking, astonishing. The suspensive blur of hummingbird, heart, blood music breaking over rocks, smoothed by the battering of centuries. The song in the breaking, not the silent center, pitched sea dark below starless, but the falling off edge. Look, wisps of the tallest branch darting up there, far from their roots. See how they never stop testing the edge of sky held by the wind. Thank you. And uh, two more. This next poem was inspired in part by Wallace Stevens's uh, poem that took the place of a mountain. Avalanche. Now she stood in the turbulent air of her making. Woman, pulse, vibrating the exact sound, ambiguous losses dismissed at last. A tuning fork, her nerves had felt the sound before knowing she was a body, a story rippling over a glacial bowl scooped clean. Pure ice filled with its own melting, as if she were scaling the vertical slope of her heart. A notch for each crack, the shards of each beloved in the worn away granite of her face, all of it stripped and falling in the far below sound of an avalanche, the higher she climbed. I've been, I'm, I'm coming to you today from Lake Arrowhead, California, where I've been visiting with my son, Ian, and his amazing wife, Esther. My son is amazing too. And my new baby granddaughter, Luella, who is four months old and whom I've met for the first time coming out here to be with them and to help them. They've gone through so much in the last year. Uh, so, Luella and I, one of our favorite things has been to sit together on a porch. So this poem is called The Blue Porch, and it's for my granddaughter. Your mother birthed you standing up, and father held you between water and air. Two days before the summer solstice, your great-great-grandmother's birthday. She sang to me as I rode her barrow, the wheels rolling over pine needles, releasing the cedar scent that forever soothes me. Today, the trees sing a lush leaved green as I find a fallen honeysuckle, the warm aroma of peaches at sunset. Day fades and the trees signal their kin through scent and twining systems sister to our neural webs. Soon this energetic thread will bind us gaze to gaze, enchanted spark, 
when I hold you swaddled in the sweet cocoon of the bamboo chair and we swing on the blue porch, singing with the quiet arrowhead pines, holding themselves aloft, sending slow pulses underground through their roots. Well, thank you all so much. I want to touch the screen and connect with you. I don't know if you can see that, but. Thank you, Heather, for coming in from California. Um, really appreciate it. And especially since it is your birthday and since you are celebrating grandmotherhood, we really appreciate your willingness to spend time with us with such wonderful poems. Um, I know that people in Reading are a tad bit shy, but I hope not too shy to comment in the chat box about Heather's terrific work that she's just given us a sample of this evening. Um, so please do not, don't be shy at all. Uh, chat away in the chat box so that the poets know that they're being heard, appreciated, even loved. So Heather, thank you again. And I hope you can stay on because if there's time at the end for you know people to react and uh, ask questions, we might come back to that, okay? Absolutely. Great, thank you so, so much. So um, that was one indication of the terrific work that's being showcased tonight. Here comes the next, Sandra Fees. She, her, is the author of The Temporary Vase of Hands by Finishing Line Press, published 2017, and of Moving, Being Moved, published by Five Oaks Press in 2017. So 2017 was a big year for Sandra's poetry. <laughs> she served as a, a term as a Berks County's Poet Laureate uh, 2016 through 2018. And I believe you're seeing the cover of uh, the first book that I mentioned, The Temporary Vase of Hands. Yes. Uh, her work has appeared in The Blue Nib, Kissing Dynamite, what a terrific title of a journal, and Sky Island Journal. So with that, we'll turn it over to Sandra. Thank you so much, Hiram. It's so great to be here tonight. I'm really grateful for your hosting. I'm grateful to Berks Bards for uh, making this space available. And um, as Heather mentioned for uh, RAC, for ensuring the, that poetry is, um, continues to be, flourish in Berks County and receive attention um, through the Poet Laureateship. Um, Heather, your, your reading, oh, she's distracted, but I want to tell you your reading was beautiful. Thank you so much and happy birthday. Thank you for sharing your birthday with us. And I want to just thank the rest of you just for being here and for um, giving attention to poetry. Um, so, so as I was thinking about this reading, I, um, I really... You know, I'm kind of in the mindset, uh, as I'm sure many of you are, of politics, but I uh, chose tonight to really focus on inviting us into a more, I guess, personal space of introspection and finding meaning in our daily lives. And they always say the personal is political ultimately. So I don't know if you'll find that in this or not. Um, so I want to begin with this piece, which um, I think some of you, many of you will relate to. I never thought that I would be figuring out um, whether I was going to cut my own hair or how I was going to do that or whether I would be cutting somebody else's hair. Um, so here we go, cutting hair. I trim his hair on the back porch. We argue, couples do. We put down the thread pick up another. He hands me the clippers with attachments, first for the neck, then the temples as I twine my fingers against the warm cowlicky scalp of him before scissoring the top. As if cutting a glossy picture from a magazine, I snip around the ears, which I've saved for last. Remembering it's the trickiest spot 
where my father said the hair tickled and poked. I looked down to find my hands, older, but not wiser, the end nearer now than the beginning, and we more like our parents than the young lovers we imagine ourselves. Silvery white clumps form a field of goose down at our feet. I sweep the remains into the yard. My face flushes, tinged with what happiness looks like. Thank you all. I work at home right now and um, I spend more time here than ever. And that became the inspiration for this next piece, which was also inspired by the poet Andre Breton. Abode after Andre Breton. My house with rooms of bone and honey, walls of birch trees, windows humming quatrains, my house with ceilings of snow-dipped mountains, floors of cinnamon llamas, and doors whose hips are swinging monkeys. My house with its doorknobs of becoming, its closets of concierges, corners of slow breezing thought. This kitchen of teeth and risk. The dining room's bronzed harbor. A living room's canoes on blue. My house, this den of wild asparagus and dragons, staircases like bell towers, hallways of vocalists on gray hinged wings. This shaggy valley of bedrooms and heaving elegies of bathrooms, the roofs cross-legged meditation, the garages irreverence. My house, garden of skyscrapers and tsunami of stillness and laughing petunias, porch screened in waning moons. The foundation, cocoons of verses and abandon, wisps of a body, my house, an abode, brow furrowed by time. So I have a, a bit of insomnia from time to time. Maybe some of you do too. And that leads me to wonder about all kinds of things as I'm lying awake, or it leads me to wander around and contemplate what's happening in other people's houses at night, which led to this piece. Behind windows. A yellow rectangle thrust against midnight and inside an elderly woman rocking a child, cutting a tooth that will be white as morning sky hunger. But for now, the woman's face is impassable and the child's streaked. It's a long way to daylight. The tick-tock of my unillumined house reveals nothing in exchange, no hint of the lone rhythm of scuffled sleep. No one really knows what happens behind windows, how in the lavish and sleepless hours of lamplight and in the rounding of the ciphered moon, there's a tender budding toward dawn. Those of you who are uh, Reading Burke's locals have likely been to Blue Marsh, and that's a place I spent a little time hiking and exploring this summer. And I also uh, learned a little bit about its history and got fascinated with what lies beneath its surface. So, my body's Blue Marsh. My body's a blue way station for prismed dragonflies, 
a maturing biome, amassing globe thistled meadows facing the sun, the neckline edged in Queen Anne's lace. My vertebrae, a multi-use trail, the interlocking trek and trace of memory and regret. It's the lake womb that's the wild core. It's water torrents harnessed now and fringed by soft-legged bulrushes. But beneath the fresh water, the past gets eyed season after season. There, a lost farmland where once fruit trees swelled and shocks of light offered these rumpled arms, the promise of moonglow pears. And uh, this next piece uh, also pays homage to the outdoors. I think um, probably for many of us right now, being outside and having beautiful weather is really a, a balm for, for the spirit. Ode to the Featherless. Too early, heat rising, the garden gloves huddled empty on a garage shelf next to insect repellent and twine. One glove curled within the other like two blue nesting bowls. Just yesterday, the cloth mitts armored these hands, my two featherless birds against an army of infidels, intractable roots, jagged holly, rosebush thorns. Coming upon the pair now, I see I'm wearing the couple out, the threads frayed at the thumbs and a small hole at the tip of one index finger shaping a fingerprint. Just yesterday, I held their palms upright in mine. Maybe it looked like a prayer, like a petition, the urge to slip barehanded into caramel earth. Everyday theology. Even crystal gazers and tarot readers will suffice from time to time. Doubters and agnostics welcome. And the curious, the spirited, the ones who don't know, them especially. Also, the ones scribbling in journals or quietly giving away their place in line or pressing protest signs toward cameras in hot sun. Practiced at the art of being human among humans, their prayer is a chalice of elegant light or a peace chant. They offer themselves up as amulets to joy and tableaus to grief. When you stumble upon such a being, you will know that even the gods and goddesses approach them barefaced and bewildered. So Facebook can be a pretty uh, interesting influence. Uh, one week, I think I have, um, I don't know about you, I sort of sometimes discover I have fear of missing out, right? Uh, so one week after seeing many posts from friends of these beautiful sunsets, I set off one night in search of one. And uh, here's what happened, I guess you could say. 8.09 p.m. It isn't what you think. It wasn't a mind-blowing, paint-splattering ritual. It wasn't a social media moment, but flimsy and nightgowned, 
a refusal to perform to my twilight whim. Suns blurred vermilion, skeltering toward raggedy ridges of sapphire hills. It wasn't a trapeze of color swinging a long series of lilac and saffron dashes across the sky, but the easy back and forth of one day relinquishing its boundary, a sigh, a handoff. And isn't this enough? Isn't this what you came for? I don't want to end with um, this poem, which was written about a summer when I was an adolescent. That was the summer, the ginger mares blazed in the pasture until just past dusk, resisting our urgings, turning their sleek backs to us each time we drew near, running just beyond reach, feathery manes and tails held aloft. Some nights, three tries, a flashlight, a sleight of hand, as they taunted us with one more nibble of dampening grass, a few more minutes before relinquishing to our sugar cube bribes gathered up to their soft muzzles, stars in their mouths. Afterward, we led their high carried grace through the metal gate to familiar stalls in the cement slabbed barn where fly strips dotted with angry jawed flies hung from rafters and fluorescent lights flickered while the mares chewed hay and guzzled water, their eyes shining. Then lights out, the barn door pulled tight. It was dark or nearly so and we wandered toward the house, silent, the air already shifting. Above us, I imagined the winged constellation, the world of horses that knew to love the night. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for being here. Well, Sandra. Together. You are getting all kinds of good comments, mm -hmm. wonderful comments in the chat room. Some that have been, I think, inadvertently maybe sent to me privately, which is a joy to read, but I believe you really want to see them. So I'll ask to make sure. I think Heather um, has lots of good comments that she shared just with me. So hopefully she'll be able to direct those to either everyone or to you. Real quickly, Sandra, it sounds like you're drawing on a well of terrifically deep well of new work, uh, if I'm understanding correctly. Are, do you have any plans for a next collection? There are two <laughs> previous ones being having been published in 2017. What are you thinking? Um, I'm thinking about it, but I, um, I've been really focusing on, um, I've been focusing on writing new work, as sure. you point out, thank you for noticing. And um, also, I, uh, I'm really trying to get some of this work, uh, and some of it's been published, but I'm also really working on uh, publication of individual poems gotcha. first, gotcha. and then I'm going to work on a collection. Itself. Well, that's a worthy goal. I think you've got a, a group here of at least 33, and I think at the peak, 35 people who would all be supportive of you <laughs> getting them bundled up and, and published as a collection, too. So keep at it. Thank that was you. just terrific. Uh, so... To round out this terrific triad, triad of poets, we'll turn our sights and our ears to Jane Relaford Brown. Um, she is the 2019 through 2021, so the current <laughs> Poet Laureate for Berks County, Pennsylvania. She's the author of My First Real Tree, I love the title, a book of poems from Foothills Publication, and I see that Carolyn Zarnecki is on 
this call. Okay. So that's terrific. Uh, Carolyn is half of Foothill Publishing. Uh, Jane's poems have appeared in journals and anthologies, including Blue Line, Cider Press Review, Alligator, Jupiter, All We Know of Pleasure, and as a title poem in I Am Becoming the Woman I've Wanted. Brown was a finalist in this year's Steve Coet Poetry Competition. She received an MFA from San Diego State and taught college writing in San Diego and in Pennsylvania until retiring fairly recently in 2018. So with that, we'll turn it over to Jane to round out the evening for us. Jane, it's all yours. Great. Thank you, Hiram. I appreciate it. Let's see. And are you hearing me? OK, good. Um, one of the things I want to say, if you're at all thinking, if you're a Berks County poet and you're at all thinking of uh, joining this competition for the coming year, do it. Uh, it's just five poems. It has been a wonderful experience, even being the poet laureate during COVID. <laughs> um, I've learned to use Zoom and do Zoom workshops and readings. But I also had some wonderful experiences, beginning with the first night uh, that I read and got to meet all the wonderful poets who were previous laureates. I felt like I was in the best club in the universe. So it was just a wonderful experience to be a part of this group uh, with the poets you heard tonight. I'm going to read an older poem from my first real tree that I think exemplifies the state we're living in. It's called Cusp. We're just sort of always waiting and now we're waiting. Um, so this is uh, all of the uses and meanings of Cusp, which was a fun research project. Cusp. It's the edge of a tooth or a crucial place where a curving journey meets itself. It's the moment of movement out of a house, a fold or flap in the valve of a heart. It's the tip of the moon. It's the point in a turn when a skater shifts on the edge of her blade. Let me ride out this turn, savor the tooth, open the chamber and not be afraid. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jennifer Hetrick, the president of Burke's Bards, reminded us at some point that, well, this reading is going to happen just a day or two after the election. So maybe you could read something calming or something for this day. And I kind of made that an assignment for myself, a writing prompt. And I thought, what the heck are you going to say? Uh, so this is my debut of Poem for the Days After, November 2020. Writing you from the back half of October, where Halloween's blue moon seems like the least of the portents, where Mercury dances backward in the sky and these days hurtle forward far too fast toward who knows what. I watch the countdown like I watch a horror film, fingers spread across my eyes, can't look, can't look away, or huddled underneath an afghan peeking through the crocheted holes. I can't know from there what you and I might know tonight, if we know anything. Maybe we still hold our breath, try to walk through our necessary lives, looking sideways at each other, thinking, you, you? Thinking, now what? How do we live in this split state? If you and I do stand on opposite bluffs of this wide divide, maybe we can climb for just a little below the fissure to the canyon floor, 
the only place where we can meet below the chasms, past ideas, though I can't fathom your conclusions any more than you can fathom mine. Let's start simple. Show me a picture of your grandchild and I will show you mine. Tell me about your son's engagement, your daughter's new job, your worry waiting for your loved one's test results. Let's talk about our children spread across this country, where they are. Will you see them for Thanksgiving, Christmas? Simpler. What are you making for dinner tonight? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, we've also been dealing, as you know, for about 10 months with COVID. And um, this is about something that I miss very much. I know we all miss different things. Um, this starts with an epigram from uh, Fleetwood PA's Ace Hardware Store. Stay safe and browse online at home. The mantra is get in, get product, get out. It's called no browsing allowed. I want to browse again someday. I don't mean scrolling alone through rows and pages of blue lit screens, 5,941 screws, 947 clogs and mules. Browse, it's like it sounds, blousy, drowsy, a round glide of a word, loose in the body, easy on the mind, being there, loafing in real time. I want to browse till the cows come home to wander happy as a cloud for hours and hours, to smell the flowers. Now everything feels flat, solely essential, a life limited to lists, so purposeful it's purposeless, as dull as dish detergent or disposable gloves as bland as hand sanitizer and as cold. Serendipity's opposite, zemblanity. Even the browser's bookshop is closed. I want to wander down aisles again, nothing in mind but to see what I find, to squat on the floor in firefly books, to open a cover and read the first page in that old paper smell of vanilla and sage and to take it home if it takes me someplace. Or gently rocking the shopping cart the way I still do though my children are grown. Working my way down aisles of clothes, sliding each hanger along a bar letting my brain go blissfully blank. Look, I'll mask up as long as it takes. I'll hurry home for all of our sakes. But one day, I want to wander again in the marketplace with a naked face, to peel back corn husks and choose the best, to lift a cantaloupe and gauge its heft, Admire its webbing, the blush underneath, to press in its little umbilicus. And if it seems ripe, to lift the melon up to my face, to pause, to breathe in its dusky grace. May we all browse again, <laughs> or whatever we wish to do. All right. Uh, this next poem um, indulges in one of my guilty pleasures from uh, the Lifetime Television Network and kind of blends it in 
uh, with a memory of my dad. Uh, I won't do my Long Island accent because I don't have one. Uh, medium. How I'll know it's you. No words, just the medium surprised eyes. So wide, they almost eclipse her pursed lips. She's whistling an old show tune she doesn't even know. Some enchanted evening when you come through, each note from her mouth sliding into true, like the bending weeping of a singing saw. After, she'll be shaken taking her time to gather her wits, licking her lips, scratching one long manicured nail into the deep bouffant. That's never happened before, she'll say, something like that. And show me her own pathetic whistling attempts. The father figure who's passed. Yes, he's quiet, she'll say then laugh, that famous two-note giggle ending up a fifth. He's funny too. I was about to tell you the mother figure stepping forward and he says, I know, I thought I'd get a word in edgewise first. She says, now you're stepping back and then I'll know it's you because she'll ask me, why is he showing peanuts in his hand? And there you are standing in our driveway, pockets full, holding just one stretched out in your fingertips, nothing moving but the dimple on your cheek as the scrub jays gather on the wires overhead. And then the first one swoops and hovers, takes it in its beak and lifts off with his prize, heading for the pyracantha hedge. Uh, the next poem, uh, I think Heather mentioned she had a residency at VCCA. I had my very first residency of my life last year at VCCA, and it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And um, I spent two weeks writing in um, a corn crib that had been converted into a writer's cabin. It was wonderful. And this is a poem, the poem really, that emerged brand new during that residency. It's called Sweetheart. Sweetheart, it surprised me when I called you that. Sweetheart, not mom, not mommy. Sweetheart, you're doing so good. And you were light years ahead of me bent into your center, hunkered down like a woman in labor, deep in the thick hard work to deliver yourself from your well spent body. Daddy used to whistle that song, even sing it to you sometimes. Let me call you sweetheart on our long trips through the Southwest, Zion, Bryce, the painted desert, while we sat reading, rolling our eyes in the back seats of the big finned Ford, the Plymouth Fury. And maybe he's waiting in the wings again to croon his tune to you again. Long ago, not long ago, I told his ghost, you can't have her yet, but you're not ours anymore. You're gone beyond almost gone to the other shore. You woke up once and said you had to make the movie stop. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. Judy Garland sang from the TV on the wall. I stood to turn it off, then realized you meant everything. We flickered there in black and white, waiting to be gone beyond. My brother bent and whispered in your ear, it's okay, you can let go. 
from your still body suddenly came your strong voice. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, sweetheart, sweetheart, let me call you that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to end on um, a new poem. And uh, if my sister is here from San Diego, I want to thank her for all the time she spent going over memories with me of going to Pop's house when we were kids. And this was the house my mother grew up in. Um, I have been loving Odes to Joy that contemporary poets like Ross Gay are writing. Uh, he talks about unabashed gratitude. So this is my unabashed gratitude for uh, the time when the apricot trees all came ripe all at once. Apricot box for Pop and Grandma Jane and the house in Encanto. Not like the crystal dish of Kentucky mints where we asked permission for one or two, where she carefully lifted its heavy glass lid as we slid our fingers in underneath. We'd suck away at the chalky mint while the grown-ups talked and roll the middle, that green jelly knot around in our mouths. Not like the seven up floats, the lemon meringue pie served at the table and portioned out. The apricot box sat by itself out on the porch and nobody cared if we squatted all day by the old wood crate, tearing them open, sucking the pulp, sticky to elbows, sticky to ears, our smiles slathered in jammy juice. Pop might say, you'll make yourself sick in a laughy way that meant he was pleased as he poured one more bucketful onto the box and headed back out to the heavy trees, their branches propped up with two by fours. He took the next bucket out to the kitchen where glass jars rattled in boiling water, where our mother sat at the table shucking Grandma Jane stood at the stove and stirred, and the same sweet we ate on the porch was doubled down and lifted on steam. We crouched by the box like little raccoons, tearing them open and raking our teeth on the overripe flesh, sucking our fingers, licking our arms. Then the gilded lily of apricot jam, still warm and spooned over toast, of sleeping comatose all the way home, carefully curled around bags of the fruit. Thank you. Thanks oh, everybody for coming my tonight. Goodness, Jane, thank you. Whoa, thank you. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> um, my friends, we've had uh, kind of the best of the best, the creme de la creme here this evening. It's just been terrific. Uh, here just recently, the heartstrings of poems that Jane has offered. And we began the evening with what I call the vivid, vivid wonders of Heather's poems. Just amazing vividness there mm -hmm. and wonder. And then the spot on sense and touch of Sounder's pieces. Um, just a terrific crown of poems in kind of a election-free zone this evening. <laughs> I don't know about you all, but I've enjoyed being able to take my mind off of what's going and swirling all around <laughs> us and focusing a bit on the comfort, uh, the amazement of these poems. I'm gonna post one last time this important call for applications to serve as the ninth Berksbard County Poet Laureate. Uh, it's a competitive process and note that the deadline for submissions is, it seems like it's far away, December 6th, but that's gonna be here before you know it. So please, please tune into that if you're at all interested. I know they're looking for terrific candidates. You've got big shoes to fill. Uh, you've heard some of those folks tonight 
three poet laureates from Berks County read tonight, but uh, I'm sure there's some other wonders of poets out there um, who yes. need to so serve as well. We have we one are... with us tonight, Nancy Yeager also. Oh, and, and Nancy joined us too. Yes, absolutely. Hi, Nancy. It's good to see you and your lollipop. I saw you <laughs> the lollipop. Um, we're at the bewitching hour of seven, a little bit past seven o'clock. So I think anyone who needs to leave, wants to leave, absolutely feel free to do so. If anyone has a, a real pressing question of any of the laureates uh, that they would like to ask, uh, unmute yourself and ask away. We can stay on, I think, for another five or 10 minutes, something like that. I don't think we're gonna get kicked off or be uh, forbidden to do that. So um, if anyone has a question, I know I was kind of curious uh, asking maybe each one of them just very, very, very quickly, what's what was the most exciting and what was the most challenging aspect of either being a poet laureate in the past or Jane currently as poet laureate? <laughs> Jane, why don't you start if you okay. would? Um, I, I mean, the, the craziest thing is that nothing's happening, you know, except on Zoom. So I hadn't anticipated that, but I did have some time at the beginning where I got to go out and about and do events at like Reading High School and with Barrio Alegria and some wonderful connections in the community that were that were great. And and hooray for Burke's Bards for keeping things going on Zoom because these evenings are wonderful. And they uh, a friend of mine who's visiting us from Ohio tonight here just said thank you all you fed my spirit and that's how I feel about yes. these events yeah. as well so thank you Roxanne good good um Heather any quick thoughts on kind of what looking back what you found most enjoyable and maybe most challenging you're muted Heather mm -hmm. there you go I really loved the opportunity to bring Ann Waldman uh, to the poet Ann Waldman to Kutztown University. Uh, and she's yes. just such a wild and riveting priestess of, of poetry from the, the soul to the political. And that was certainly a high point. I think just bringing, widening the audience for poetry and bringing bringing poets in, and, and also the work that Liz Stanley and I, Elizabeth, uh, the work that, that she and I did to bring Donald Hall to, uh, to Rack was during that period, and that was an amazing experience. That would have Donald been Hall was a hoot, let me tell yes. you, all kinds of things happened. Oh, yeah during that experience, including a trip to the to the doctor in the emergency room for Donald's legs. Wow. So we were we were very challenged. I'd say that was the most challenging moment. Gotcha. Yeah. Well that's those are terrific memories and wow to be able to bring these nationally scoped poets into Reading and have them hear you and you hear them. That's a terrific opportunity. Uh, Sandra, any quick thoughts from you? Um, I would just share one of the really, I think the, the highlights for me that I felt I received was the opportunity to be in, um, and Heather had mentioned it, a uh, social justice anthology, uh, a poet laureate, poets laureate. And um, that was that was really cool. Um, and I think the challenge for me was uh, really being able to feel as though I could um, give to the community in, in a real way while you know, having a really kind of full, full-time plus <laughs> job at the same time. And so, you know, I still think about um, how to, how to continue to, to give to the community um, going forward. So. Sure. Well, I know that a lot of communities, towns around the country, and of course states have poet laureates, but I have a feeling Reading should stand particularly tall and proud with the Poet Laureate program you folks have sponsored, the county has sponsored, and the people who have filled that um, important role. So thanks to all of you who have done that, including Nancy. Um, I think we'll go ahead and close it out for this evening. If anyone is so inclined, if you, if you want to save the chat, particularly any of the featured poets, 
if you go to the chat room down at the bottom where you can tap in a chat message, there are three little dots over on the far right of the two line. If you press that with your arrow, press that th those three dots, you'll see the very top line is the option to save the chat. And if you press that, your chat will be saved as kind of a real unfancy, but all there text message to you. And I think you'll get that, I believe, after the chat or after the Zoom session ends. We are recording this session. So anyone who wants to go back and review it, or if you know of people who wanted to be here, friends, families, or pets who wanted to be here and couldn't tune in, let them know that it will be available. Uh, Jennifer Hetrick will make it available, I believe, on the Burks Bards page. Um, and as somebody, I think Liz put in the chat room, thanks also to Angie for making all of this virtuality possible for Burks Bards. So with that, we'll say so long to everyone. Terrific poetry to you all and stay strong and stay patient. Thank Talk you. Thank you. Thank you. Great host. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye Thank you, Jane. It was so good to hear you read. Loved it. And Love thank you. you, Heather and Sandra, and just a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.